at that point, I considered the rebel era as part of my life was was pretty much over. I could relish in the fact to know and to be confident that that I was one of the ones that helped build it, and no one could take that away. And um, you know, as new people come in that even that know me, they find that group. They they don't know that I was part of the rebels, and I don't need anyone to know. I don't need anything from from that. But what we knew, and, and after. The split, the the breakup of the band of the Beatles. <laughs> we there were two camps or, or two or three or who knows. Um, but the person that I was most aligned with with this needs to stay what it what it was. At the end of the Rebels, it was it was pretty much like myself, John, and Andy. And um, John Grubb. And so we split split up and and we went and formed a a company, a legitimate brand. We said, if we're going to do this now, we're going to do it right. We have to protect it because we're not going to let in the wrong people, but let's turn it into something else. We always said some of these things. And so we called it AIR. It is what it always had been, the Alliance of Independent Resorts. It was going to be an actual legitimate brand so we formed air legally as a, 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 an llc we looked at options of doing non-profit and for-profit and back and forth and there's benefits for being a non-profit but we wanted to do some things never was it a plan for this to be a business where john and i made an income ever but we knew that with profit, we could do a certain thing. We could always start a nonprofit underneath a for-profit company, but you couldn't build an LLC underneath a nonprofit. So that was the reason we did that. But we we looked at what what's the differentiator, what caused some of the disruption, uh, the allowing of just anyone to come in, and it was like our industry. There was no real bar to entry. There was no skin in the game for anyone. There's no accountability. So we decided to turn AIR into a true enterprise and association alliance that would have, again, mission and vision, but but start providing resources, curated, created resources, um, and with a subscription model. So we we decided on a, a price, which was too low, but... We just said if those are serious, want to have an online library and access to be part of something, there would be dues. It's like dues involved with uh, the NRA or anything else. Um, It costs money to run those organizations to allow them to be what they can and the resources and uh, responsibilities that they uphold. Um, Again, I've run businesses for all of my life, but not this kind of business. So. Again, we're figuring out as we go, we we set the price too low, meaning we had to have a whole lot of people at the low price point. And when you get a whole lot of people, you don't you don't get the one percent anymore. You get the whoever will pay. Um that happened, we had the birth of air, and we started having summits branded as air and not the rebels anymore. It was confusing for people. We have the rebels. Why do we want air? You know what? You know, I can do the rebels for free. All the same things, and we completely said, "Yeah, you're right. You can go do that free. You can go hang out in that group and watch everybody belittle each other and uh, watch a brand new restorer ask a question, um, and and then have a thousand people tell them how they're wrong and they need to get out of the industry. Uh, that was your opportunity to help someone and help our industry. So if you really cared about restoration not being full of hacks you just created a hack you just created someone who will never ask another piece of advice and will go through doing what they have been doing wrong or right and continue to do so and then probably teach someone else to do it wrong and therefore you have what we have now as the industry so 
really a lot of emotional intelligence lacking uh, on a lot of people um, not seeing the bigger picture. But we built air. We had Summit in Boulder. Great Summit. Great, great, great. We had the next one in Charleston, and COVID hit. We were getting some momentum, some steam, and we literally had our summit in Charleston as COVID was dropping on America that week, heading into that weekend. We didn't know if we were getting, we were having, talking to the to the resort. They didn't know if they were going to allow us to have it. They didn't know if the city or the county or the state was going to shut it down for groups of over X, and that was the whole talk. You can't have a group more than. 50 or 100. Well, we had 100. We were safe with a, a group of 100. We had 120, but we fibbed and lied. We didn't know if people were going to show up at the door and be locked. Um, and it was crazy, but we had it, and it was great. Some of our speakers couldn't make it in, so we had a 300-inch TV screen and uh, zoomed everybody in, and OP and Mark Springer. Um, they were a little afraid that if they flew all the way out east, they couldn't fly back west. There was talk about travel being shut down. So <clears throat> it was a weird time, but we, we got through that one. But ultimately, COVID killed our efforts for a while of what we wanted it to be, which was going to be a lot of based around the community. We were starting chapters where people would get together in regional areas uh, once a month or a quarter or whatever they decided have a guest speaker, but have a day to where they just met, discussed big issues for our industry, help solve some issues of their own companies, welcome new people, handle some business, and worked on improving things in their own backyard. Great model, great idea. <clears throat> we still have it, but COVID really changed how people gather and get around, and Zoom became and household work. Zoom came almost as big and synonymous as Google. Hey, let's get on Zoom. It's just a word part of American dialogue now. Um, but we're still trugging along trying to have air going. Um, we have a couple hundred members, very loyal, because um, we're, we're not creating a whole lot. We, we, we are in a weird spot right now with air trying to get some legs under it to make it a rocket ship. Um, there has been some other network type groups come about that are different they're not the same and we're not over here creating we're not a tpa we're not providing leads for people this is a community of like-minded restorers trying to improve themselves and others and we're going to do that through education networking and opportunities but we're not providing jobs now you get connected to a few hundred people around the country, people all the time have losses that aren't in their backyard or floods or fires and said, hey, this is a friend of mine or this is a family member in Cleveland. Who do we have in Cleveland? You go and look at the map, you give that to one of your brothers or sisters. It's a great system. Um, but that's where we had the birth of it, and uh, lots of people didn't like that. We, again, trademarked it and, and, and copyrighted it. Um, but then there became this air versus rebels conversation. And that's a that's not a conversation that I ever have been or will be a part of. It's not the same. It's just not. So um but we're still we got air now and it's going to it might take a generation, but if we if we don't do anything, it's not good. So we have to do if not us who, if not now, it's when. It's pretty much been our motto.